Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're down here, we're going to do some river fishing for pike with James Lanfear, who makes customised pike fishing lures. We're on the Somerset levels. Let's have a chat with James so I don't get run down first. On this bridge, and like all fishermen, you've got to stand on a bridge and look in the water, haven't you? I'm James Lanfear, custom lure builder, and um, I make lures that go out all over the world uh, for tuna, for big stuff on the seas. Uh, but also pike lures, perch lures, bass lures, uh, you name them, uh, I'll build them. And um, that's one of them there, which is a darker version that I'm going to try for a pike today. It's a lovely country, countryside around here, beautiful. Uh, though we have a, a strong match fishing contingent at Fisher River, and um, you need to say the otters are back, and uh, plenty of pike, um, which bother the match fishermen. <laughs> so if you want to find where the pike are, Speak to the match fishermen, and they'll uh, they'll tell you. It's a nice sort of natural uh, section of river here. Um, flows down through typical lots of bends and weed banks and things that provide good cover for the fish. So it's ideal for winter fishing down here because in the summer it's just solid weed, pretty much, and um, you know you can't chuck a lure or move a lure at all. <laughs> um, it's just thick with it. Um, but in the winter it all dies back and we've got clear water uh, that we can fish for the pike. So the river here is two to four foot deep really, it's not deep at all. So it's club water and we're gonna give it a go today, usually catch some fish here, so take it from there. Okay, so um, yeah, that was <laughs> that was quick. We got one straight away, which is nice. Um, I'm using a, a little stick bait wobbler that I use, you can see is is lipless, so it sinks in the water, but you can fish it very slowly, um, or you can fish it quite quick. I was fishing it quite quick this morning uh, because it's so mild. You know, it is. I mean, you could virtually put a popper on it, so mild. And as you saw, I caught that fish casting upstream don't have to cast downstream all the time, particularly these lures. The water's quite slow. You can just bring it back a touch faster than the, than the pace of the water, and these lures will work. They'll twitch and, and duck and dive and flash in the water. And um, you know, pike like them. They like it like that. The important thing is to give them time, give them pauses in between, to give them time to hit. You know, the pike, they like it. They'll follow a lure, and if it pauses, oomph, that can often trigger a strike in, in my experience anyway. But 
Well, James has moved on upstream here now, and he's told me just to work this bend here, up from the bridge, very often there's a fish there. So, if we get James going through first, he should hopefully get one. And I'm gonna work away here using one of his absolutely immaculate lures. Gotta keep this one well away from snags. I have to say, I've used a smaller version of these before and they absolutely cast like a missile. This one would cast even further. I'm using Mike's rod. I'll tell you what the... Uh, rod... <laughs> oh no, got one on camera. <laughs> oh, he's come off. Lost one there, James. I, I was talking to these people here in YouTube and, and they hopefully saw the fish come off. It's a pike about four pounds. There you go guys, that's on camera. You can't say it doesn't work. I'm just gonna unkink that, there's a little kink there. Twist that around. That fish sort of hit me unawares. I feel another cast coming. Well, guys, I'm on one of James's lures. Hit me like a train, this one. Ooh. Right in by the margins on the other side. Oh yeah, nice fish, guys. Nice fish. Let's see if I can get some shots of it. We might be able to, we're really high up here, so hopefully we'll be able to see the fish in case it falls off. Yes, he might ping off, but at least you've seen him. James is going to do the deed. Fingers crossed. He's in. <laughs> and here, so here's one on a little wobbler, little perch wobbler. And you can twitch that with the rod tip, make it twitch and duck and move it slowly through the water. And um, there's the result. Pike love him. You certainly hit it hard enough, James. <laughs> Straight at it. Yeah, just, just banged two, it. Two in ten minutes. And he did that, um, he, he hit when it was in the pools. Yes. As I paused between tweaking it, yeah. it's like he stood there, bang, he hit it hard. They love that, they do seem to love that. Guys, I'm on again. I'm on again. I'm on again. <laughs> it's not a big fish. Look there, Jacks. It's great fun. Another Jack. I tell you what I noticed when I looked at this pike's eye. Look at the colour of the eye and look hard at the colour that Jim's painted on that stunning perch lure. Exactly the same. As you can see, they're not all big fish here. You get some lovely, beautiful little jacks though. Mostly they're jacks up to about seven or eight pound. You get the odd 10, the odd double. The record is 25 pound. But uh, mostly it's lots of small fish, which give you great fun on lures. Active light gear. Move to another stretch of the river here now, and um, you can see that we're on the levels because you can see on the trees how it regularly regularly floods there. And where I'm stood now is, is regularly underwater because uh, this takes it's just a flat. It just takes time to get away, and even with all the work we've done, it still comes up and out over um, because it just collects, you know, hundreds of square miles. Of, um, of Somerset and all we've got to come through here you know we're only a few miles from from the tidal stretch here now and then that's so low that when the tide's up they can't let the water out so it all backs up through the river and then when the tide drops out again they can actually let it go <laughs> on again guys 
need the exercise. Well there we go guys, this is Somerset pike fishing at its best. Not one, two pike at a go. It can't get any better than that, can it? I suppose you could if you had three rods. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant fishing. I can't tell you we must have hooked 10 or 12 pike now Yeah. in two hours. We've had great fun. It's been really brilliant fun. Let's get these guys back. One out, he wants to go, and there he goes. As a fish farmer, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, James. <laughs> I can do the netting all right. You've, but you've done a few tens of thousands. Yeah, in fact, you've had ten to my two this morning. <laughs> yeah, but the fish, the fish, the fish are off suicidal. They know, they know I've got to catch something. <laughs> This Somerset pike fishing is something else, isn't it? Well worth a two and a quarter hour drive. Brilliant. Bad news is, don't tell Jim. I lost that red hot plug. God, I feel really bad. Well, not that bad, but it was a great, it was a great plug. No question. Let's get him back. So we had a good morning. Graham's had about 20 and I've had two. <laughs> no, I think we had about a dozen or 14 between us, I think. Yep. Uh, which was great sport, wasn't it? And I um, just had a bit of lunch, it's out here. We're trying another bit of river now, a bit further downstream. Um, seeing maybe we can find a, a bigger one after lunch. Um, who knows? Um, it's a lovely day anyway, it feels like spring already. So I can tell you a bit about my lures that I make. Um, there's one here that I've, I've made specially for Graham. Hookless, it's hookless. <laughs> yeah, that, so he can't catch any more. <laughs> no, he can put, put what hooks he wants on then. Um, but that's a bleeding brown trout, which I thought he might quite like. And uh, that's a sinking stick bait. So that'll sink down and then you twitch it with the rod tip. And it, go through the water with a lovely action uh, that the pike like. And they're all made from wood. Make a carve a wooden blank and then they're through wired so that wire goes right through the body of the lure and then there's a loop attached to that. So that they're really strong even if you know a big fish managed to disintegrate the lure, crunch it, uh, you wouldn't lose the fish because you you've still got him on the wire. And then they're coated with foil and then translucent airbrush paints that I paint them on and then metallics and the white for the belly and any colours and details that spray on the fins and then they've got this hard epoxy coating that gives them, you know, protects them and gives them a lovely finish. And I've got some more here that I made earlier. So I, I sell them without hooks. Um, it's not, I haven't just uh, done that for Graham, um, so that people can put on whatever they want themselves, whether they fit it off with singles or with uh, triples or a combination, and whatever type or make that they prefer. Um, but I've got a few different types of here. That's a stick bait. And then we've got a, a, a wobbling lure, 
which you can see is a totally different profile and has a different action. Instead of darting the rod tip, if you pull it through the water, retrieve it, it literally just wobbles around. But you can use the rod tip as well just to get it to twitch. But because that, that profile, it doesn't glide through the water very fast, so it's just little short jabbing twitches rather than nice long glides. So it's a different, different style of bait and produces a different style of action. And then this is um, another little stick bait, as you can see, in an unusual colour called Blurple, that sort of half black, half purple. But it's a good colour for all sorts of predatory fish. And then there's the little top water bait, you can see he's got a little loop below the chin, which makes him sit up like that. And you can bring him across walk the dog style, that's actually a mullet, uh, but it works for pike, um, across the surface of the water. And that's another more traditional walk the dog style. Again, Flynn. And uh, that lure's actually had a nice £10 pipe last season for me, off the top, which was exciting. He just got greyhounded on it, half in, half out the water. Whoop. And then poppers as well, always good fun. Mate of mine, he had his first ever pipe, £16 on a popper, just like that. Um, which was, he was well chum, spoiled. And then there's little, little twitch bait. And these, I've got a, the main lead in the bait is in the belly. And they sit like that. And you can literally fish them very slowly. They fish high in the water and they twitch under the surface, hence the name. Just little sort of spiky jabby movements. Uh, but it's very successful, particularly in the summer. It's something you can fish very slowly in amongst the weed. So you don't have to drag, like a crankbait would just drag into the weed. You can chuck this into pockets and just twitch, twitch, twitch it. And they sort of entice the pike out of the weed. Good fun. So this is a, a wee stick bait. And um, in a quite a lurid colour. <laughs> but pink works. Pink works. It's amazing what species of fish, pike and tuna and bass and all sorts that will take pink, bright pink lures. And uh, there's some anglers that just swear by it. So I've not caught one on that yet, but I hope I will. I put one in the box. And then another one here we got. That's a great big one. That's hopefully if I come across one of the big mothers and I can put that great big stick bait across her nose and, um, and maybe catch her. And the orange belly. Yes, I guarantee the orange belly, I can guarantee that, <laughs> confirm that the orange belly does work. Yeah. Well, Graham did the damage this morning on a, on a little version of that. It was a smaller one, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, smaller, and then with that bright, hot orange belly. And that worked a treat this morning, but unfortunately he lost it under the bridge. Yeah, it did go the way, the way that so many lures do go. Yeah, but that keeps me in business. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... Um, the rod I'm using, Graham was asking what I was using here. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure what it is. It was supplied to me by a friend who's got a tackle shop up in Wales. And it's um, it's a custom-built um, rod on a good blank. I'll have to ask him. But it's it's eight foot, and I would require talk it as sort of medium for pike. You know, it's not super heavy gear. I like lighter gear. Um, but it'll cast lures down to half an ounce quite happily or lures up to four or five ounces, it will lob, um, if you want to, if, you, if I need to. Um, and I use a little multiplier, because I do use fixed balls as well, but I really like this little, this Abu Ambassador 2500C, and I got black plates for it, because they look cool. Um, and as you see, I use mono on it. I like the multipliers, because you can, when you're casting towards the far bank, you can just feather, rather than trying to feather the front of a fixed ball, you can just feather the ball with your thumb and you can literally just time the, the lure within inches of the bank, you know, cast after cast. Um, and that's why I like to use a multiplier um, where you're casting up against, you know, structure and um, far banks and reed beds and fallen in trees and willows and that sort of thing. You want to use quite strong so that if you get a snag, you can pull up, but 15 or 16 or 18 pound even um, is ideal. And you're not casting far. Um, there's no big tide or current to fight, so 
you don't really need braid. Mono, I find, is more forgiving when I'm playing fish and um, I get less problems with it. And then for traces, I use two kinds. I mean, this is just standard plastic coated wire, uh, crimped up myself, about a foot long and a nice little quality snap hook. But also in clear water, or if you're after the perch with some smaller lures as well, I found um, that this modern stuff is fantastic. That's 20 pound, but you can hardly see it, you know. Um, and I've landed lots of good pike on that. It, it just, you know, it doesn't break. It's brilliant stuff. And you can see how much thinner that is compared to the traditional stuff. The water's quite mucky today. And jack pike tend not to be too fussy, so I put that trace on. Don't forget, when you're fishing artificial lures, even with one type of lure, it's possible to change the action by either slowing down, speeding up, altering the retrieve, you're twitching with your rod top, not twitching with your rod top. You have to look in the water, watch that lure as it comes through the water if you can, and try and work out if you get a hit or two, even if you don't hook up, what exactly was the speed and the rod action that you were imparting to that lure. Lure fishing is great fun because you have such a, well, it's a huge diverse number of lures available. And even with Jim's stick baits, there's just different weights in them. And don't forget, they can be customized. You can get those weighted to suit your own demands. And what about this? I thought I should be digging lugworm here. What on earth has happened to the river? I asked Jim and he said it just been drained and pumped out literally must have been overnight because the grass was even wet it was like the tide was going out but beautiful setting we had a cracking day there decided to move on down these sort of I'm going to call them are they causeways are they some sort of form of dike to hold all the water back the flood water from going over that dike and down across the fields big problems they get with flooding down there but when I was there you could see the water's pouring out. Now Jim did say these fish better with at least wait for this two feet of water on top of that. When we fished this bottom end it was very very low. And what's this? They look like Bigfoot or is it Smallfoot? They look like otters. Can anybody out there tell us what they are? I've never seen finger slashing weird werewolf like markings from a creature. I don't know what they are. Some of you naturalists out there must know I got it down as a werewolf. Here, down in the bottom stretch, there, there's a side stream coming in and two rivers joining. Always a good spot to try and get, catch a fish. And yes, indeedy, I managed to get yet another pike on a lure. Just twitching it quite slowly, not fast speed, twitching it slowly, pretty much the same as I would a dead bait. What a place to go fishing. I can't wait to get back there. Well guys, we've packed up now, starting to get a bit cold, getting cloudy. I think we've had the best of it. I don't know what we've had about, 16 pike between us, I think. Three or four or five lost, more than that, I think. And all on these things, all on these lures. Especially with the, 
the, the orange belly, wasn't it? That was and Jim showed me this one with that uh, paint on the back. And it lights up like a bloody Christmas tree growing through the water. I've never seen that before. So, you know, that's something you might want to think about. Honestly, not messing about. That colour is bizarre in the water, wasn't it, Jim? Mm. Especially low light conditions like it is now. Shows up. So, Jim, appreciate that, mate. Thank you very that's much. That's all right. Hope yeah, you well guys, done. hope you oh, guys have totally awesome fishing show. Of like and have seen a little bit of the uh, Somerset Pike fishing. First time I've ever been here, never been here before, and hopefully I'll come back. Jim, that was really good fishing. me.